live and pre-recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. I am Brian Buckley. This is being recorded on March 28th, 2019. How the hell are you, huh? How's it going? Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back in California where I'm appreciated, where I'm loved, where I feel good about myself, where I feel wonderful. Uh, it's probably hitting the internet's March 29th, 2019. You can listen to the show on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, everywhere. We love you, Podbean. We love you. And follow me on Twitter at BrianBuck13 and at RedTicketBlue. So like I mentioned, we got a lot to talk about today. I didn't mention that. That that's that's not aforementioned. That's actually just mentioned. A lot to talk about. Maybe you should have done a podcast earlier this week. Well, you know, sometimes things just don't present themselves, so shut up. But yeah, we got a ton to talk about. Ton, ton, ton. So I'm back in California. Got in late last night. Flying into Sacramento. They had some big thing, I don't know, for some like nun or something from Brazil. There was all this dancing. It was like ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night and I felt like Weird Al Yankovic and Naked Gun, where people were about to give me flowers or whatnot, but no, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. No, I just got the normal California greeting, you know, where they uh, give you a mirror and tell you, don't you love that? Don't you love yourself? Aren't you amazing? They give you an illegal immigrant, a uh, homeless person, say, hey, these are yours now. Uh, okay, what the hell am I talking about? I got no beef with illegal immigrants or uh, homeless people, you know, got, got to do better, that's all. Uh, but yeah, I don't know who these people were. They, they, they were being greeted and, you know, I'm like in a haze after being on a plane for 10, 11 hours. They're just like, I don't know. Some of them, and some of them look like, I don't know, like Russian immigrants from, you know, sitting in like a, they're, they're like two camps too. Like one of them was, they had the little the, like, kerchiefs on their heads. Like they were in a bread line, St. Petersburg. Then the other people were obviously from Brazil because the flags and all that shit. I, I, I don't know. This isn't a big airport either. So it was, it was quite noticeable. Anyways, who gives a shit? Uh, so yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Went to work today. Oh, it was your vacation? Oh, it was great. Yeah. Leave me alone. Uh, no, I like my coworkers. I shouldn't say that. But yeah, I'm back. Uh, we got uh, we got a lot to talk about. You mentioned that already, Brady. Why don't you start talking? Uh, so uh, where, do, where do we start? Where do we start? So yeah, Puerto Rico. Uh, I did my thing. Last time I talked to you, I was uh, slightly inebriated uh, on the beach there in the, the northwestern part of the island. Did the rest in San Juan, all that, you know, did all that shit. Uh, again, no real issues at the airport. Um, we did get, my wife and I were doing this aisle thing now where both of us get aisles. So we don't have to sit next to anyone or, well, we sit next to anyone. You know, we're not in the middle. And, and when you're the aisle, you control the row. That's That's really how it goes. And then, I don't know, she was in front of me, and then I sat down and go, what are you doing sitting here in the middle, though? Oh, well, this guy wanted to sit with his wife, and I'm just like, well, what the fuck? You know, he should have done that beforehand, you know? I'm sick of, like, doing, I mean, and I get, granted, I overreacted because I openly said this. I said, what are you doing there? And she said, well, this guy wanted to sit with his wife, and I was like, well, maybe he should have planned that beforehand. You know, like him standing right there listening to me. But I think he might have been one of those breadline people, and he probably didn't even understand me. But then I was like, well, what, what am I doing? Calm the fuck down, Brian. But I'm sick of people not doing what they're supposed to do. And then they're just, because you know, like some people, maybe not them, uh, but you know, some people like make their plans and they're just like, oh, well, we'll just ask somebody. To, what the fuck? Fuck you. Oh, we'll just ask somebody to move. No, that's not the, we're living in a society in the world's George Costanza. Anyways, so enough of the negativity, right? Because there's no negativity on this Red Ticket Blues podcast. By the way, I want to read uh, one of the latest reviews here. By uh, by a listener, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, S- he changes his name sometimes. It's Scory Webster sometimes. But I want to put the okay. Da, 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 da. This is this is good. Um, but I liked it. It made me chuckle. That that's why we're wasting time on this. It made me chuckle. And and you could uh, make me chuckle too if you want. It sounds like creepy. It's like a perverted Santa Claus. You can make me chuckle. Uh, right. From my understanding, Brian's deal with iTunes is very simple. His deal with Podbean is very complicated and <laughs> involves computer scammers from Kenya, Lagunitas, DraftKings, etc. Scory Webster, thank you very much. And, and once again, people, leave a review. iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher. But most of the reviews come on iTunes, but if you're listening on Stitcher as well, too. By the way, speaking of all this, you know, Podbean, I, I can't love this even more. Uh, even more. I, I love the fact that it shows you the geographical locations of your listeners. I, you know, obviously I expect a lot in the Northeast and that area and whatnot and branch out a little bit there and maybe in states that have a lot of population like Texas or California or whatever. But I am shocked by the amount of listeners in Michigan. I don't even know if I even interact with anyone on Twitter in, from Michigan and from the country of Italy recently. Now, maybe they saw like Francesa or something like in a, uh, 
in 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 the the, the show title or something and thought maybe that was I, I don't I I can't explain it but I, I can't imagine people in like Rome or some like little uh, yeah it's the only place in Rome it's the only place in Italy Brian Rome but like indulging but anyways. I thank all of you. I don't care where you're from. I'm an equal opportunist to listen to this shitty podcast. So please continue to do that. Anyways. All right. So where do, where do we want to start today? So we got opening day and let's, let's be honest. Opening day is amazing because your signals rebirth any team. Well, at this point of the day, no, 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 no team is, we all know what's going to happen. Red Sox are losing. Yankees are winning. So that, that's how the season's going to go. But I mean, any team, everyone starts out zero, zero, oh, you know, all that crap. Uh, speaking of the Red Sox, how are they doing right now? I saw that they were losing 7-2, and I mean, basically the world is ending. Uh, let's see. I was just actually watching some... Let's see. Oh, 10-4. Beautiful. But I was just watching uh, some March Madness, too. And didn't know anybody. Didn't know anybody. I knew one player on Florida State, Terrence Mann. And the only, obviously the only reason I know him is because it's the name from Field of Dreams, James Earl Jones' character, you know? Peace, love, dope! Now get the hell out of here! Uh, but back to... Uh, Oh, Brian, what was this comedy routine? Shut up. Back to uh, opening day. So the Yankees, obviously, uh, what they went? I think it ended up being seven two. Luke Luke Voigt hits a bomb. Uh, Tanaka. I, I didn't really see a ton of the game. I was back at work, you know, going through. Don't you love when you get back to work and you got to go through the like this this bevy of emails? It's like oh god, oh god. I mean, half of them are garbage, anyways. You just delete them and feel a little better, but just like oh, I have to, do I have to respond to them now? That's been like seven days. Like that that should be you know. That should have helped itself out, you know. That that should have figured. Every, oh God, no! But anyways, uh, Yankees look good. Hey, what can you say? It's one game. What do you want to go crazy? But uh, hey, happy guys are hitting home runs. Greg Bird looked like shit until they did the old. Like I said on Twitter, the old A Rod special. Hit one up when you're uh, up big. Hit one out when you're up big. So, man, what can you say? You just hope you hope it goes on from there. Um. Yeah, what can I, I, I don't know what else to say after one day of baseball. I don't know what my takes should be. I don't know what I should say. Um, but I'm happy the Yankees won, and I believe the Mets won. I think Cano, I, I know Cano hit one, hit one out on his first at bat. I, I don't know if I want to put my faith in Robbie Cano at this point in his uh, career. But hey, listen, you know, when the guy plays and he's not juiced or is juiced, now they won 2 nothing. hey. Homers and first at bat. Hey, what can you do about that? I mean, that that's good. And Mike Francesa has personal friends with Robbie Cano, by the way. He knows him very well, just like Jose Reyes. There's certain Dominicans he absolutely loves and he gravitates towards. And he, they're, they're they're his guys. But he looks like a defeated man. Well, we'll talk about that later. I'm jumping all over the place here. But uh, what was I going to say? So Tyler Wade, yeah, th- that was the big thing. That's, I'm a little late to the party on this one. Tyler Wade, are, are we still outraged? No one even, f- <laughs> you know, this is the thing. Tyler Wade didn't make the team. Tyler Wade, uh, who has had a few cups of coffee here in the major leagues with the Yankees, can't, he, you know, he's a quadruple A player. That, that's what he is. He can dominate. He can do well in the triple A. He can't do it in the, in the majors. I mean, he's a Luis Sessa, but offensively. And he didn't make the team, and he threw a little hissy fit. Listen, I understand being pissed. Don't give that shit out to the media. No one wants to hear that crap because you look like an asshole. And I think, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's had a little hissy fit before when he didn't make the team. And the fans on Twitter, the fans on Twitter would have thought that they caught Mickey Mantle, you know, that Hank Aaron didn't make the team. It's Tyler Wade. And I said, in three days, no one will give a shit. Did anyone else utter the name Tyler Wade today in opening day? No, it's quickly forgotten. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Tyler Wade is an afterthought. He's gone. It's done with. Now, gr- granted, we'll see him again. But, I mean, stop it. Tyler Wade. I can't believe how crazy everyone got about Tyler Wade. Everyone has such immediate fucking dumb reactions. I, I just keep swearing. I don't know. That really annoyed me, though, with Tyler Wade. Everyone going so crazy. Get your priorities in check. It's Tyler Wade. I mean, just going to say Tyler Wade. Anyways. And you saw uh, Jacob DeGrom. He got his contract. Well-deserved. The guy is, uh, he's you know, he's a mild manner guy, and I think he deserves that contract from the Mets. And I don't like Noah Syndergaard talking about another man's contract, because did, did we not like that when Carmelo said, uh, you know, in, in you know, he, he wasn't praising Jeremy Lin, but he went the other way and said, oh, that's ridiculous, that contract, which it was, but you don't talk about another man's contract. Well, Noah Syndergaard, pay the man. pay. Th- Shut up, dude. Is there a more low key not even low key but just because the Mets fans don't want to admit it enough of that guy 
Dude, you, when you play, you're you're most of the time pretty damn good. You're injured a lot, and no one wants to hear from you. Like this, again, I've said this, and, and everyone says it all the time. This beef, quote-unquote beef, air quotes, with Mr. Met is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. That That's like minor league stuff. It's like, ooh, you want, you want to come down to the to the Bushmill Park tonight? You're going to see if the pitcher's mad at the mascot. It's like, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. <sighs> That's my only Met take. And it, listen, they brought up Peter. Actually, no, no. This will lead me into a different point. They brought up Peter Alonso, And, uh, you know, I know uh, a big topic of conversation, it seems to be yearly now, is manipulating service time when it comes to the Major League Baseball. And a lot of people don't understand how this goes because, they, again, they're all they're jock sniffers and they don't understand uh, exactly what baseball is. They all think that, you know, Glory be to God uh, that they there's some you know it's like uh you know, you're a martyr and you, after a jihad or something you go to heaven and get seventy two virgins if you win the World Series no no it doesn't it doesn't work like that you know GMs and manager and GMs and, and owners and front office people they run a business now people love to say baseball's a business baseball's it's a business that's why I trade and listen they sign him here it's a business. Why do you not understand that it's a business when it comes to manipulating service time? They, that it, this was collectively bargained by the players' union and by the owners, all right, that, you know, you send a guy down for a few weeks or whatever, you control an extra year of service time. Is it dumb? Is it idiotic? Is it absurd? Of course it is. It's stupid as hell. But if I'm a GM, and I know everyone's on the Brody Van, well, I don't even know, is it GVW, BVW? Uh, bandwagon right now because he's handsome. He knows what he's talking about. He's a smooth operator. He's he's he he connects with the fans. That's a stupid move. Oh, they don't want to win. Listen, you stupid idiot. Winning helps the profit margin. Yes, but you know what also helps? Apparel, attendance, concessions. They are in the business. You want to say business? Well, guess what? An extra year of Peter Alonso is business. Now. I know there's also uh, a different party coming uh, at me right now, and that is the extending party, the extension party of people. Sounds like some sort of communist uh, extension party of people, some sort of communist regime, right? But uh, you, here's the thing. You make money, right? How do you make money? You have good players. Do you win? Winning helps. If you don't, well, that that's going to hurt. You bring up Peter Alonzo. The Mets better hope they do really well in those first 12, 14 games. Because if they don't, guess what? They lost out on a year of Peter Alonso jerseys. Peter Alonso being the star. You know, bringing people to, to asses in the seats, selling those beers. And we know, all know how, how cheap the Mets are. Even though they just gave Jacob DeGrom all the money. But do you see where I'm going with this? Like, winning is wonderful. That is not the main thing. Because, let's be honest, there's like five or six teams in all of fucking baseball that care about winning. The rest of them are all just trying to make money. They're trying to make, they're trying to win. I mean, winning helps again. I, I just wish people would look at things. Well, oh, oh, so the games in April don't matter, but the ones in September do. You, you, you're not understanding what I'm saying. Sniff another jock. You are a fanboy. Peter Pan, Twitter. Jesus Christ. And if I'm a GM, every single one of those hotshot prospects, just like the Toronto GM keeping Vladimir Guerrero down, that is the way you do it. And if you're, and do you think that they're going to be really that angry that they didn't start the season? They came in 12 games later. Oh yeah, Chris Bryant's so pissed off about that right now. Oh God, he can't get over it. You're dumb if you don't do that and you should be fired. Yes. Me with absolutely no professional expertise in the game of baseball whatsoever. I am calling for GMs to be fired. That's, that's, that's basically where we're at this point. Um... Is there anything else about baseball I really want to talk about? I guess A-Rod, but I mean, he doesn't really play anymore. A-Rod uh, accused... Hey, listen, he's a great guy. He's, he's, he's... Listen, can he manage the team? Can he manage the team? Accused of cheating on Jennifer Lopez with some sort of uh, pinup model in uh, Britain or whatever, trying to arrange some uh, threesome tryst or, uh, of some sorts. What is with all the pinup models in England? I don't know. Didn't they... I feel like the New York Post used to be like that. He used to be like, oh, wow, uh, you know, some stupid headline and page six and then like some full page thing of some chick in a bikini or whatever. Yeah, Britain does right, huh? Oh, <laughs> yeah. We're the original ones. Ah, oh, there we go, mate. That's Australian. Um, That's it for baseball, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, so in Puerto Rico, I drank a ton. A lot. Oh, by the way, I successfully brewed beer. 
And uh, I came home after about 10, 11, 12, every time I mention the flight that it just continues, two flights just continues in terms of hours, came home and had the cream ale, drank it and oh, my head was spinning. I said, oh, I like this. It was great. It really was. It was great. But what am I drinking today? We got a great beer here. And if you haven't noticed, especially the iTunes people, I'm putting a link to the song at the end of the, uh, the podcast and a link to the beer itself at the end of, uh, you know, in the description of the podcast. So, you know, other people, uh, if you listen on other forums, I think you might have to just, uh, you know, just recognize it. But I do provide links on iTunes. Right now we get Knee Deep Brewing in Auburn, uh, California, which this is one of the up and coming breweries. I could see this beer going national very soon. There are two of them under New Glory Brewing, which I really don't like the name of it because that, that, that sounds like that, that emo pop band. Um, and Knee Deep Brewing, it's called Breaking Bud. It's very good. It's an it's an IPA. They they're the 2016 G A B F Bronze Medal American IPA. I don't know what that means, but it, I guess that's some sort of uh yeah they they want a medal. It's a Breaking Bud, very much like the Breaking Bad. I mean, if you saw the cover, if you click on the link, that uh, it looks uh, like the show or something. But very good, very good. I like this. Uh, well, let's let's just sit back and you know I've already halfway through it, but very piney. I don't know. There's, there's only so much I can add to like the taste of beer. It's like, that's good. That's bad. Oh yeah. That, that's different. Well, oh, it's very piney. Oh, I can never be a food critic. I feel like I'm years of smoking cigarettes. Yeah, that's about it. Stop with this joint Xfinity Wi-Fi, Mother, get the fuck out of here. Jesus. He's popping up. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, I was just watching the MLB, uh, excuse me, the NCAA tournament. Not a ton. Imagine, remember how angry we were about Tom Izzo's outburst, the Michigan State head coach, where he yelled at a player, and we basically acted as if it was, you know, Bobby Knight and 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 Hitler combined. Like it was just, it was so outrageous how every no one. <laughs> it's just one of those things. No one talks about it anymore. It's called, Tom Izzo basically was ready to be tarred and feathered in the town square. Now Izzo is a piece of shit. I mean, he, he just saw today he's saddened by the FBI investigating all this shit going on. Okay, are you really that saddened as you sit there and saddled up at the university with Larry Nasser, you know, molesting freaking gymnasts? Like, it, it really, you're saddened, Tom. Will you shut the fuck up? Guy who won't let people transfer. Or, 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 you know, manipulate service time. Uh, but I, I saw that Duke-UCF game. I mean, that was good. Um, I wasn't able to watch anything in Puerto Rico. So we had this NBC, in, when I was in San Juan, just NBC New York, which obviously that doesn't help with when it comes to that. Uh, kind of all over the place here, right? What else do I want to talk about? Uh, hold on a second here. This this is going off the rails here. I got I got to got to get my shit into my ducks in a row here. Well, actually, actually, let me do this. You know, this is not a sponsor to the show, but I think this could help everyone out in the long run here. I, I know a lot of podcasts actually are sponsored by Robin Hood. I am not. One day I should maybe look into sponsors. It just doesn't. I don't want to act like I'm so important. Like oh, it doesn't concern me making money. I don't know. I just never done it. But through Robin Hood, through my own personal Robin Hood here, and you can support the Red Ticket Blues podcast by this. Uh, you know. You want stocks? Yeah, look at your stocks. And when it, Brian, I'm not buying any stocks. Will you shut up? No. Well, what it is, you use my code here and you can get a free stock and you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is sign up, use, just use this link, this, this website, and you will get a stock and I'll get a stock. Now, it could be a stock of like Ford or something shitty, which, hey, it's still free anyways, but there is like a one in 1,000 chance you get something like uh, Apple or, or Netflix. You know, Apple's around 200 Netflix is in the two eighties. I think something like that off the top of my head. So here I will put this in the link and, and, and the description, but I'll read it off here. It's, you know, share dot Robin hood. Actually it's H T T P S colon slash slash share dot Robin hood dot com slash Brian B 1893. So share dot Robin hood dot com slash Brian B 1893. Again, I'll put it in the description if you want to do it again. I don't even think they make you like, you don't have to deposit any money or whatever. You want a free stock. It's like, maybe, maybe it'll, you know, put you on your burgeoning, uh, you know, stock market career. And you could, when you're sitting on your yacht and ignoring your children and on your fourth wife and, uh, your fifth prostitute of the day. And people will say, Hey, how'd you do this? And you say, Hey, 
You know how I got started? I was listening to the Red Ticket Blues podcast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, he gave me a link and this is how it started. And now I'm basically Warren Buffett. I mean, he's a piece of shit compared to me. So there you go, people. It's in the description. Check it out. Um, there's also another thing. This is, this is free financial advice. I'm still on this. Stash is one of these apps that, uh, you know, that, that you can invest in stuff and it's pretty, it's like micro uh, stash, micro investing. You get a debit card through them and, and you buy things at like certain places, you get a stock in them. And what I mean by that is, okay, so you use this debit card, you go to Walmart and buy toothpaste. I mean, it's a small percentage, but you get a small percentage of Walmart stock. I don't know. I, I thought that was interesting. I'm still waiting to see how this goes. So maybe I shouldn't be uh, touting this and advertising this, but I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Ah, uh, what was the, oh, Jesus Christ. So let's talk people. I mean, drumpf, 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 uh, the Mueller report, uh, Mueller, huh? I thought it was going to take over the world. I thought, I thought, I thought uh, Trump was, the walls are closing in Donald Jr. He's going to be arrested any day, says Twitter. And shockingly, not to this, uh, Red Ticket Blues, uh, podcast host, nothing. You can have my offer right now, Senator, nothing. Uh, and nothing was there. Now, granted, we still haven't seen the full report, and I believe it was, it's not VMADS85 on Twitter anymore, it's a different name, and I'm sorry, I don't have it off the top of my head, uh, let's, uh, shit, I'm sorry, dude, but, uh, it's, it's the VMADS character, and he, he made such a great comment, he said, I think the Democrats don't even want this thing, you know, revealed to the public. They want to continue asking for it. Because let's be honest, the likelihood of anything a smoking gun being in there is very small. But the idea that the Republicans won't give it makes it seem as if, well, something's to hide. Well, then uh, adversely, you could say, well, why don't they just reveal it if there's nothing to hide? I get that. I understand that. But I think it behooves them. It's better for them to say, give us what we want uh, and you don't give it to us. I mean, that that's really what it comes of. Come, come, so the, I can't even talk. What is wrong with me? This is a terrible podcast. Okay, he just, he just liked this. Okay. Delmad's 15. There we go. Um, yeah, Trishulowitzki got a hit. He was not crying. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with people? You're not going to have sex with the players. Stop it. So where do we go from here? Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. Trump's winning. I mean, Trump is winning in 2020. All of these candidates are so stupid. They really are. They really, I saw Kamala Harris says she's going to raise the, the, the salaries of teachers. You don't have that authority. <laughs> you stop it. You're playing to the dumbest common denominator in fucking public. I mean, these, these, anyone who believes that, wow, I'm a teacher. She's going to raise, she's going to raise my salary. That's great. She doesn't have the authority to do that. Will you stop it? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Oh man. Trump. I, it's just another, another four years of Trump. I just. Listen, he's not the worst president in the world. Don't get me wrong. Now, me, I'm a little bit of a... I have been since I was a small child. I'm a little bit of a tree hugger. I am. I, I, that's way... That's pre-California. And he obviously doesn't give a shit about any of that. And a lot of Republicans don't. I, I wish... I wish they did a little more. Uh, but anyways. I'm all over the place, people. I understand. I understand. Intercom sticking by Craig Carton, which boggles the mind. Um, that is... That's something else. Oh, Gronkowski. I see Rob Gronkowski is retired. I don't know if I completely believe that. Um, I don't blame him though. He said how many like back surgeries to say goodbye. I, I, I get it. You know, maybe there wasn't that much to talk about. I'm like at 23. I'm winding down here. Uh, but yeah, who gives a shit? But I, Rob Gronkowski, I'm sure that doesn't make Tom Brady very happy. And Robert Kraft, huh? Uh, he, I don't know why he's continuing with all this. I would just uh, say, yeah, I, I did it. I, I want to move on. He wants to go to trial with this. Did you want that video of you getting a BJ out to the world for, I, I don't understand where that's going to leak out somehow. And just like the Mueller report, like the idea that, that, that bar is going to keep that thing. I mean, that and the Robert Kraft video will eventually leak out if, they, if it, it's going to happen. <laughs> that's the world we live in now. It, it's the government can't do anything right. Especially, Hey, especially if you're prosecuting Jesse Smollett, Jesus Christ, dude, I'm not trying to act like Jesse Smollett's case is of the, you know, national security importance, but what the fuck talk about, talk about just buying your way out. I mean, that's, it is quite a world when you have Rahm Emanuel and Donald Trump passionate about the same subject and they're both on the same side. It, it, sink your teeth in that for a second. Uh, and I have a feeling this 
It was a bad move by Jesse Smollett because this is going to bite him in the behind because uh, this ain't going away. And I have a feeling that uh, uh, people are not going to be quiet about this. And I, I had this conversation with Joe Bags, you know, he said, oh, he'll be back. And I said, I, I don't know about that. You know, people... People, uh, the, the public doesn't like being lied to. They like people falling on their sword and, and then us judging them from a higher uh, cloud to say, oh, oh, yes, that's right. You did do wrong. Eh, maybe I will give you another chance, you plebeian. But he said, I don't know about that either, Brian. And then sent me a link, the Empire checkmark account saying, see y'all Wednesday. And it was glorifying the charges. And I was just like, Damn. Maybe I'm wrong. I think the city of Chicago and the police department there is going to make, they are going to make Jesse Smollett's life a living hell. They are going to use everything in their power to bring that guy down. And he's still under federal charges. They're going to talk to the feds. They're going to say, you make this fucking thing stick. This guy embarrassed us. You know, he embarrassed us. And that is a city that has gone through some shit when it comes to accusing black people of doing like that Laquan McDonald video where the guy, the guy was basically walking down the street and the, I mean, he wasn't making an aggressive stance towards the cops. He looked like he was just kind of all out of it and they shot him a million times. So I think they want to kind of repair their image and this, this they will not stand for. I don't think Justice Smollett is out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. That's my hot take. Hot take. That's right. Uh, let's see. What else are we going to talk about? Yeah. Is there anything else? How you guys doing? Huh? By the way, how, how, how's everything going in your life? We're getting into April here. Things are getting a little nicer. I'm going to New York next week, actually. That's right. Yes, I will be visiting the East Coast. I'll be signing autographs. Times Square. Uh, if you'd like to join, form a line. 7 a.m. I will be there at 11 a.m. Ah, yes, New York. I will be there. Brother's wedding. I got to make a speech. Hopefully I don't get too drunk before the speech, but uh, I, I can't because that would be uh, incredibly embarrassing. And my mother would le never let me hear the end of it. That is true. And you know what? Rightfully so, honestly, to be to be completely honest. Uh, so let's let's end the podcast. Let's 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 wind down here and let's talk about our old friend, as we always do, Mike Francesa. You know, I I. I I don't know how many times we're going to talk about Mike Francesa going forward. And I know some of you are thinking, well, that's, that's interesting, Brian. You talk about him every, uh, every, every podcast. So what do you mean we're going to stop? What are you going to talk about? I know it will take away from content. I, I do understand that. I might have to go outside his house when I'm in New York, maybe and do some surveillance or something to add to, to content. But you know, uh, Mike's, uh, Mike's, Mike is a sad character. He really is. It's, it's getting to be pretty, pretty bad. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, you got the books, uh, th this has to stop with the Xfinity stuff. How do I get this to stop popping up? It's really not even that important, but it's just annoying. I don't like things, you know, out of my control, which is basically my life. But, uh, so Francesa, you know, the, the ratings book ends. He has, you know, Bill Simmons on the show, which Bill, you know, Bill's, I said this on Twitter. Bill Simmons has the fifth most popular sports podcast. He's got like millions of followers. I cannot imagine Bill Simmons being more irrelevant. I remember there was a point in time where like his voice, his podcast meant something. I feel like it's nothing. Like it's Bill Simmons is just an old, he's just a slightly younger Dan Shaughnessy. No, I don't want to say he's Dan Shaughnessy, uh, but he's, uh, you know, guest of the podcast, friend of the podcast, right? Um, but I, I, Bill Simmons, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I'm like running out of adjectives or comparisons to what to say, but he uses him, you know, I guess the ratings book are ending. He has him on the phone for an hour, which again, Mike completely ignored Bill Simmons. Like when he was that, that, that authoritative voice and <laughs> does now brings him in when he's just like, you know, reaching retirement age of the Francesa variety. And who's Matt, Michael K on? He has Mad Dog, which is the ultimate just trolling, by the way. Ultimate trolling. And Mad Dog's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm hooking up with Mike again. I don't care. I don't even care if they give me $5 million. I'm not going back. Now, granted, he didn't say that word. I'm paraphrasing. But that's basically what he said. But, you know, that's, that's Mike's version of I really got to step this up. He's also going to have a wrestler in studio next week. A fucking wrestler. 
Roman Reigns. Now, listen, I don't even follow wrestling. I know who Roman Reigns is. I know he was the champion, you know, predetermined beforehand. And he also, uh, I think he had some sort of lymphoma or whatever. So listen, I can understand that being a really good guest. Roman Reigns wants to come on to the Red Ticket Blues podcast. I'm all for it. Mike Francesa has shit on wrestling the last 35 years. And he's bringing this guy in studio. Can you be more of a sellout fraud? Can you? Is it possible? Is it possible to be more of a sellout fraud? It's more pathetic. That or your comeback here, were you being a complete fraud going on Twitter and having an app? Oh, God, you, what a loser caller. Get a life. It's more pathetic, you tell me. Wait, wait a second. Why is why is any of that? What is wrong with coming back and being part of those things that are? Okay, we, we we don't need to rehash my own glory, but think about that. He's bringing on a WWE wrestler. Like, what what's next week? Like a K-pop band, folks. These 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 kids are really doing well in South Korea and globally. By the way, we're we're gonna bring them in. Hey, uh, Mons, bring them in. I mean. Are you, are you, this is where we are with Mike. The end is near. The end is near. Like, but you know, this is kind of like the Mueller thing with the whole Trump people, but this is actually real. It's all happening. Like Funhouse, if you don't know Funhouse, and listen, most of you do know Funhouse, but you know, he documents every single thing that Francesa says that he does wrong, yada, yada, all that stuff. And you know what? <laughs> he played a, he played a clip today of prank calls to Mike just today. Like his show is becoming like his Twitter feed. Follow Mike Francesa on Twitter. Look at the replies to everything he says. It's just trolling. It's trashing. It is. Mike looks like he wants to give up on, on this Funhouse thing back after this on Twitter. Oh, Mike. Let, 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 I'll just play some of them. I mean, I know you could easily go on Twitter and uh, and find it, but let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Here we go. So let me just play a few of these. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm on Good. my way to my birthday dinner. What an opening day. Um, I was just wondering, with Mickey Calloway winning today and he's 2-0, and is that the best winning percentage in opening day history for the Mets? I don't know. Why don't you look it up? Ian in Bridgeport, what's up, Ian? Hey, Mike, happy opening day. How about it, huh? What's happening? Uh, it's, uh, with the Yankees and Bird and Boyd, what a great problem to have, huh? Especially when you're looking across the field at the Orioles. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I can take any more of these calls. I'll try. I mean, my God. I mean, you guys got to do better than this. Kevin in East Rutherford. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Mike. How are you again today? What's going on? <laughs> you already know that's a uh, prank. You know, I know it's only one game. The Mets look good. The ground pitched well. Cano had a key hit, which was really the only offense. For the hey, you don't have to, Kevin, you don't have to recap the whole game. What's the point? Danny in Staten Island. What's up, Danny? Hey, Mike, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. You missed the wait long. That was great. Just a great Ooh, day. Ooh, he I mean, um, Having an opening day today, the game's tonight. Who's winning the Mets? Do you think they'll go 162 and 0? <laughs> Tommy in Lincoln Park. What's up, Tommy? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. Just want to talk about uh, Greg Bird and uh, Luke Voigt. I think uh, Luke Voigt ultimately wins the first base job. He already he won it. Wins. He already won it. He won it. He never. He never lost it. It was. It was his. It was his the whole time. But do you think he he ultimately nailed it home because he wears a size small jersey and has huge muscles and wears no undershirt? Don't waste everybody's time, especially mine. Joe and Queens, what's up? Oh, I'm not. I'm not gonna play all of it, but just Mike. If you see the look in the video, he looks like a defeated man. It's. And you hear all this talk, oh, no, I don't want a co-host. And you know, Okay, Mike. I, if, I, if I have a co-host, it would be on my decision. It's like, Mike, you are at a point in your career where you don't make the decisions anymore, dude. You don't. You really don't. Oh, God. It's, it's, you know, I, I know I've become different in this weird world where I used to love Francesa, become obsessed with him, do entire podcasts with people about Francesa. But, like, I feel, like, so cheated. So just, I, I don't know. It, looking at what this is now, I kind of revel in it because he's a millionaire asshole. It's not like he's going to be fucking welfare or anything. Guy's millions of dollars. He doesn't even know what to do with, but it's, it is kind of funny to to see some, a dick like him be so humbled. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me folks. So I think that is the podcast. I love all of you. Um, remember you can listen and to all the new listeners, especially my Italian brothers and sisters and, uh, my, my Michigan brethren, 
iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, and follow me on Twitter at BrianBuck13 and at RedTicketBlues. Uh, remember to leave a review if you can. If you can't, listen. Hey, listen, I know you're not all as creative as I am. Just leave the stars. You know, five-star review on iTunes will will go a long way, and I appreciate all of that. You're all beautiful human beings. So uh, with all that being said, uh, well, let's, not, let's not go there yet, Brian. So anything interesting? Uh, I think there's uh, – yeah, fuck it. I'm not going to – this is a piece of shit. Excuse me. Anyways, podcast sucked. Anyways, uh, with all that being said, I'm going to – And everything's gonna be Give me lots of money and everything's gonna be What they want you to hear So it's cool And I sure believe it Sell out With me Oh yeah Sell out With me tonight Record company's gonna give me lots of money And everything's gonna be Alright She said, but I can't work in fast food all my life.